many of us in the endurance industry know between different athletes, we have different heart rates. But what is the fundamental reason as to why our heart rates are different, even though we might be doing some similar training? Today, I'm going to talk about the, the relationship between heart rate and some other factors to do with our cardiovascular system that actually lead each different athlete to potentially have very different heart rates, even though you might be putting out the same intensity. Hey, welcome back to the channel. Nick here talking science of endurance and everything sports science in general. Thanks to everyone who's been supporting the community by subscribing, sharing the videos, commenting, joining us on the live streams as well. Been really enjoying uh, getting involved and interacting with you, answering your questions and helping you out to learn the science of endurance and sports science. And something I'm gonna be bringing to you guys, for those of you who are really interested and engaged in our community, something extra I want to do, introduce some new perks and benefits just for you uh, keen fans out there. Down below, you'll notice there is a new join button here on the channel. By clicking that, you can become an official member of Team NJ Sports Science, a way to gain access to some further perks above and beyond just watching the content that regularly goes up and joining us on live. It also gives you priority during those live streams to answer your questions first. Anytime I see your comments come through as well, there's a little badge next to your name if you are listed as a member there. So I know exactly uh, who to respond to first, who to get back to as quickly as possible um, and give you a little bit of priority. There are some future perks coming along as well. So keep an eye on that. But really for less than a coffee a month, I know that doesn't sound like a lot, Make your coffee at home one, one day. I did it today, made my coffee at home, saved my $2, $53, whatever it is. Spend it on joining uh, as a member of the channel, help continuing to support me make some of these videos, upgrade equipment, change my lighting, change the live streaming setup to give you the best chance to be able to learn some of this content and bring the best value to you guys as well. It also takes a little bit of pressure off me to completely honest on putting ads on videos. And if you don't like the ads that pop up, I can actually start removing those the more people join as members. Also, it allows me to take a little bit more time out of my work to be able to make these videos for you guys and help you guys out with some of this free content up here too. So if you can keep engaging and joining the community, even by sharing the videos and commenting, that is great. But if you want to go above and beyond, consider hitting that join button down below and go check out the membership to join Team NJ Sports Science. As I said in the introduction, today's video is understanding the ins and outs of heart rate. Why do we have different heart rates across different athletes? And really simply, it comes down to we have this conversation all the time about, oh, well, I'm running at the same pace as my friend. We're working about that same rough intensity. We're both able to hold a conversation, but their heart rate is much lower than what mine is. Why is that the case? And we hear this time and time again, but do we actually understand why is that occurring? It all comes down to the relationship between three factors to do with our heart, essentially. What we have is, first of all, heart rate. We all know what this is. It's beats per minute. So it's how frequently the heart is pumping blood um, or, or how frequently the, the heart is contracting every minute. That, that's what we know, that's what we see on our watches through our heart rate monitors. Cool, we're all across heart rate. We have this other component of how much blood is being pumped out of the heart per beat, which is what we call our stroke volume. This is fundamentally, the heart is gonna fill up each, each time uh, it relaxes, heart fills up in the left ventricle specifically is where it's gonna output into the, into the arteries and send out to the rest of the body heart fills up, when it contracts, how much blood is actually being squeezed out of the heart into the arteries per beat is our stroke volume. Multiply these two together, the rate at which we're beating, so heart rate multiplied by a stroke volume, gives us what we call our overall cardiac output. This is how much blood is being ejected from the heart or pumped from the heart every minute. This here, this cardiac output, really is more of our indicator of our oxygen supply around the body. When we talk about things like VO2 max, we're interested in how much oxygen we can take in, transport, and utilize. The transport mechanism isn't necessarily dictated by heart rate. It's dictated by our cardiac output, how much blood is actually leaving the heart per minute, because that's going to dictate how much supply we're actually getting to the working muscle every minute and how much oxygen we can use at the muscle every minute, which ultimately is our VO2 max, those processes all combined together. So understanding that we could be getting a, a cardiac output for a given intensity and, and cardiac output for a particular intensity for two very similar athletes might, might end up being quite equivalent. We might be pumping out the same amount of blood total per minute as, a, as an end product, but how that's made up might be very, very different based on some individual characteristics. Things like type of training that the athlete's done. If one athlete, uh, if athlete A and athlete B, let's call them, athlete A's done a lot more long, slow, they're going to develop what we call left ventricle size. So the increasing the size of the heart, it allows it to fill a little bit more. If I look at two drink bowls sitting on my desk here, one's a little bit smaller than the other, this would be like having a small stroke volume and a large stroke volume. This one can, can fill a lot more blood into, um, into the heart because they've done a lot more long, slow aerobic based training. So every time the heart contracts, it gives us best chance to be able to pump out a lot more uh, blood per beat. That might increase their stroke volume. 
on the flip side, if they do a lot more high intensity training, whichever of these athletes, that might increase the thickness of the left ventricle wall or what we call the hypertrophy of the heart. At the end of the day, the heart is a muscle. It's not an organ like our stomach and our liver. It's actually a muscle. So it contracts and relaxes similar to anything else, like your bicep, your quads, whatever. So we can actually increase the, the hypertrophy or the, the size and the strength of the muscle by doing things like high intensity interval training, by doing heavy resistance training or resistance training in general, anything that's gonna put the heart under enough stress where it has to forcefully contract uh, and a lot uh, contract with a lot more force to pump out more blood or push out more blood per beat. We combine these two together, we get a much higher stroke volume. So we're able to pump out, we're able to fill the heart with more blood, left ventricle size, and we can squeeze a lot harder. That gives us an increased stroke volume. What does that then mean? If we can pump out more blood per beat, heart doesn't have to beat as frequently to give us that total output. It can pump along at say 150 beats per minute in that comfortable run or 145 beats per minute, whatever it might be for you. Your friend next to you might be putting out the same amount of work, same similar intensity, but their heart's not as well developed or their genetics doesn't allow them to develop as much. Me personally, I'm never gonna have the same size heart as someone who might be six foot six because I'm about five, nine and a half, five, ten on a good day. Um, my body size, similar to what my lung capacity is like, my body size dictates how big my heart is probably gonna to get to in terms of genetics. So that can also be a factor compared to someone who's a lot taller might have a much lower heart rate. Why? Because they might be pumping out a lot more blood per beat and they've got that room, just pure size in their chest to be able to have that heart grow a little bit more. Types of training, like I said before, the genetics play a role. These are the real contributors as to why two athletes might be putting out different heart rates. One might be slightly higher, slightly lower. It all really comes down to this interaction between heart rate, stroke volume, and cardiac output. So a bit of a short video today, but I wanted to just summarize those key components and the, the factors that work together and interrelate to be able to lead to a performance overall. So let me know in the comments, what, what are some of the differences you've seen uh, in terms of uh, heart rate between you and your friends when you're running at, or your training partners, training groups, etc. If you're similar in terms of overall fitness, but you're running at the same speed and notice some differences, are there any clear things that you've noticed in training? Do you, have you seen people doing different types of training, different genetics that might be at play in your circumstances? Always happy to hear that down the, down the comments down below. If you have any questions around heart rate and this interaction between heart rate, stroke volume, and cardiac output, also leave them down below as well because it can be a little bit tricky to get your head around the equation side of things. I didn't want to get too much into the numbers and, and doing some example maths today because for me, that doesn't resonate. So understanding a little bit more simply of, if we can pump out more blood per beat, we don't have to beat as frequently to get the same output. Hopefully that makes a little bit more sense and talking about things like drink bottles as well. I'm gonna wrap it up there. Like I said, keep it nice and short for today. Give you a bit of an insight in terms of heart rate differences in athletes and the fundamental reasons as to why we have different heart rates. As always, continue to subscribe to the channel. Give this one a share. Send it to someone who might be interested in understanding a bit more about why their heart rate might be a bit higher or lower than someone else that they train with or even with you. As always, keep the comments coming through. Looking forward to seeing you on a live stream and go check out that join button down below. Like I said at the beginning of the video, building something a little bit different here to keep supporting the channel. If you wanna support the channel in more ways than just liking, subscribing and commenting, there is now an option there. Join team NJ Sports Science. Looking forward to seeing as many of those member badges pop up in the chat section in our next live and in the comments as well. Looking forward to interacting with you and being able to deliver on some of those really good perks that are coming in the future as you join up to the membership. I'm going to leave it there. That is it for today and we'll see you in the next one.